and welcome to Crafty Garden, my channel about sewing, knitting, spinning, and all of the crafty things. Um, so today I have a little bit of sewing to show you and I will have um, quite a bit more coming pretty soon. So um, maybe a fabric haul video coming soon. So um, I want to just go ahead and start with sewing. So I only have one thing to show um, that I've worked on since I last recorded and that's that's Tuck's my cat in the background. Um, so that is this corduroy skirt and it is a navy corduroy skirt. Um, it's almost finished. I've sewn the seams with the side seams with this um, jean top stitching thread and I thought that was a fun detail um, right now all I have to do is um, sew in the invisible zipper so once I get the invisible zipper sewn in the, it should be nearly complete at that point um, so that's what the inside looks like I did serge um, the seams and then separately and then sewed them down with the um, jean thread just to give it a little bit of contrast and um, what are you doing buddy <laughs> I'm in my new rocking chair I just got a rocking chair um, from uh, my husband's aunt and uncle run a used furniture store so this is my new um, yeah my new rocking chair so yeah anyways this is almost done um, once I get the zipper in I will finish the waistband and then hem it um, and I'm not sure what do you guys think should I put this um, thread on the hem too and if I do should I do two lines one line what do you think because I'm not sure if I want to um, you know to to have that in the hem as well so yeah um, these should be um, done pretty quickly uh, last time I made this pattern I talked about it on my last video so if you want to um, hear more about that um, I, I told you what the pattern was in the last video um, I made a Halloween spiderweb skirt um, out of that uh, last year so, <laughs> um, yeah, so that's it for my spinning. And um, so on to knitting. I have one finished object, and that is my shorty socks. And these socks um, were knit with Peggy Jane Fibers um, yarn, and she is based in Vermont. And... This is leftover, this is all of the leftover from um, the first color in my So Faded sweater. I'm not going to show that today because I haven't made any progress on it, so there's really no point in me um, bringing it out. But yeah, so these are done and they fit me. Um, they were 64 stitches and um, toe up, Turkish cast on. Um, and I did 12 wraps, so 24 to start. If you've ever done a Turkish cast on, then you should know what I mean. 12 wraps and then, you know, 12 on each side gives you 24. And um, I did wear them out already. I wore them with um, sneakers that, funny enough, match. They're purple and pink sneakers. <laughs> so um, they did kind of sag a little bit in my shoe. But there was just enough of this cuff that it didn't, like, you know, the shoes eat your socks. Like, it didn't completely eat my socks. So, so I was fine. I was worried about it. I kept like, pulling them up. And then eventually I was running errands and then I forgot about it. And then later realized that they were fine. Um, they sagged a little bit. But, yeah, they were fine. So, so far these are my best fitting socks that I've ever um, knit. And... Uh, that being said, they are slightly loose. There is a bit too much width and maybe a hair too much length. Um, but the heel fit really well. So, um, yeah, I have a high end step. Anyway, so that is my finished shorty socks. And um, that's it for my finished objects this week. 
um, but I do have quite a few uh, works in progress. Actually, I have more works in progress than I'm going to show um, because other ones I haven't touched and so I don't see any point um, showing them. So if you've watched my other videos, I've talked about them in the past, but yeah. So moving on, my next um, work in progress is a pair of socks and these are my Mrs. Potts socks and I have gotten so much done on these and I think they just look so amazing. Um, so yes, I ordered these back in the spring when Beauty and the Beast came out, I think, in the spring, right? Um, anyway, so these I bought off Etsy from the Yarn Jar Shop, and um, it came with this, um, oh, there's a, on the other side, there's a pot and a teacup. So, sorry. Ooh, allergies. Um, Yes, so I did, um, I don't think, did I forget to mention, I talked about it last time, I think, but I did the garter stitch heel for fish lips kiss heel. So fish lips kiss heel, but you knit, you don't purl on the wrong side. So it gives you a garter stitch heel. And I decided that I liked the extra stretch. I feel like it gives a little extra stretch, so... I decided to do that again and yeah oh so the difference between these so it was great these um, you know helped me although the, although you know I said these are the best fitting socks that I've made I'm still working on finding you know the what's what's gonna work best for me so stitch count and needles and things like that so um, so yes, so I did go down, those were, the, the shorty socks were 64 stitches. These are um, 56 stitches. So yes, 56 stitches. And um, I did actually do this on the last, on the, the shorty socks, but I did decrease right in here. Um, so, you know, these, this section right here so maybe a couple of inches here um you know two on each side so four total and that um made that a little bit makes it hug your foot a little bit more right here and you know commercial socks do that so I, i'm thinking that might help me keep the socks you know from falling down and help them stay on my feet so i did do that and then um i also up here I have decreased again um, the same way so that um, my ankles actually get really skinny you know right after the um, what are those what's the what's the uh, technical term for those little knobs on the side of your feet <laughs> I don't know um, but my my ankle actually gets pretty skinny and um, I talked about it before but there's a, there's a sock book that I talked about where you take all your measurements and you find out if you have average feet or non-average feet. And my ankles are slightly on the, on the abnormally skinny side for my foot circumference, something like that. So um, for me to keep the, help, keep the, help the socks stay up, <laughs> um, yes, I, I thought it would help to decrease um, right there where my ankle goes in. So yeah, these should be done soon. Basically, um, it's just, you know, a lot more stockinette and then cuffs and I'm done. And yes, they are just plain vanilla socks. Um, I think maybe, I don't know, I can't decide if, if I really, really love the way these fit, should I knit another pair of vanilla socks? I have I've talked about it before on an older video, but I have this um, Nomadic Yarns, um, sorry about the glare, Honey Dukes to, to make into socks. And I also have Kiss the Girl, which is um, a Little Mermaid theme sock, actually. 
this one's nicer because uh, you can kind of see the color striped. So, yes, um, I can't decide if I want to the next pair do another um, plain vanilla sock or should I, you know, be brave and experiment with um, maybe a free pattern like um, the Mercury socks or something like that. I think the Mercury socks are free. Um, yeah, so that's that's of my uh, work in progress, and hopefully that will be they, these will be done pretty soon. Oh, the needles are um, double zeros, so U.S. double zeros, and these are the uh, mini Chowgu. Uh, I think they're the lace mini Chowgu. It's a long name, but they the triple double and just the zero all have these nifty little dots that let you know that that this is the double zero. So, um, so yeah, I've been knitting them um, on the double zeros and US double zeros and same for these. So, so that's my Mrs. Pot socks. <laughs> oh, and um, yeah, I did talk about it. Um, the beauty and it was the beauty and the beast. I said beauty and the beast, right? Hopefully. <laughs> I was kind of thinking Cinderella for a second, but it's Beauty and the Beast. I don't know why, why I thought that. Um, so the other thing that I re really recently um, started back on, working back on, was um, my grandpa cardigan. I have a crochet hook in here. <laughs> um, oops, that's the wrong side. So yes, last time I talked about it, I picked up the provisional cast on. And I needed to start, this is the right front. So um, the progress that I've made is actually, uh, so all of from here down. Um, this is just marking the start of a chart. So there's charts in the pattern. This is a the Grandpa Cardigan by Hokey Locatelli. I'm just assuming that you know this or that you watch my past video. <laughs> If you did watch my past video, thanks for coming back. <laughs> um, especially if it was that chatty one. <laughs> um, but yes, so I'm excited. I picked it back up. I was kind of just, it was a mental block that, you know, I was missing a stitch or two. Something was off and I just needed to really sit down and figure out what was going on. And I did that. I fixed it. And now um, everything is back on track and... I'm excited. So once I knit this to the same length as the back, so this is basically, you know, this is the back here and then this is the right front. So once I knit this um, to the same length as this, then I should probably be starting this side, repeating the process. And then I think I'm going to be connecting it so that you're, you're not really working in the round, but you're, you know, you're going from side to side, if you know what I mean. So yeah, so that's my grandpa cardigan, and this is the, and I'll show you, I have the skein right here. This is the Brooklyn Tweed Arbor. Sorry, the lighting, I don't know if I can. Um, yes, it's Brooklyn Tweed Arbor. It's 100% American Targi wool. And this is just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful wool and yarn. And this is the color Klimt. And I'm super excited about this. Um, I'm, I'm thinking I might go to Rhinebeck. And if I do, it would be my first time ever going to Rhinebeck. And if I can get this done in time, this might be my Rhinebeck sweater. So we'll see. Yes, so that, that was, um, I think, all I had to say about my grandpa cardigan for now. And um, my next work in progress is a spoiler. Um, so I got the August, I've got two fiber clubs for August, and that um, that is created by LCB. And I got um, the Into the World fiber club. So... My dogs are outside barking and it's really distracting me because I kind of want to know what they're barking at. Oh, okay. 
anyways, so, <laughs> um, so I'm going to show you the created by LCB, um, fiber that I got, and not only the, the fiber, I've already completed, I've already spun and completed the yarn and started a project. So, <laughs> um, so if you don't want to see, um, because maybe you're either spinning it or you you get the club yourself or something like that and you want to maybe finish watching this video later, um, I just wanted to warn you, um, I'm going to talk about that right now. So um, this is the yarn that I spun and it is Coriadale. And um, I'll go ahead and insert a picture now of the the braid that I got. And um, it's going to be a, a, a photo that I took from my Instagram stories <laughs> before it disappeared because I forgot to actually take a photo of the braid before, <laughs> before I started spinning it. Um, but if you want to see things like that, you can follow me on Instagram. And um, I do, you know try to um, do Instagram stories of things that I'm working on um, or you could just see me walk around um, in my garden I had showed videos of my apples on my apple trees and things like that so and my plum tree so this is um, Coriadale and this is the colorway secret garden the, I think this is my first time spinning Coriadale I need to maybe like keep a list or a journal or like a spinning journal or something where um, I mean I have Ravelry and I actually just figured out how to change my name on Ravelry so now my Instagram and my Ravelry are both Crafty Garden Sews and I should put the link below if you would like to go check them out um, so yes I spun this it spun super quickly and um, I'm not sure if it's semi woolen or semi worsted but it's a worsted prep because it's top and then I spun it letting a little bit of the I'm gonna blank on the word right now the twist the tw the twist run into the fiber as I was spinning it so it brought in a little air and this is um, a light lace weight I did calculate the grist on this and the first time I bothered to calculate the grist and it was um, I think 2400 which puts it like a higher than the than the lowest I'm probably just way way too much information but anyways it's a light lace weight and um, I was going to ply it but then I actually felt like this was super consistent consistent enough that I wanted to just knit it and I wanted to knit it into a shawl so I did I've already started um, knitting this and um, by the way you, <laughs> you think your yarn looks consistent when it's on the bobbin or in your skein and then you start knitting it <laughs> it is I mean it is really good for me because um, at this point I haven't even had this is my new Lindrum I haven't even had my Lindrum for two months now and um, so I think for all the yarn that I've made, you know, this shawl that I spun three ply, like a traditional three ply, uh, fingering weight, uh, just all the things that I've made so far, I think are really good for the amount of time that I've had my wheel. So I'm not, I'm not complaining at all. But so yes, yeah, so the project is um, is another shawl, and this is the kindness shawl. And that's a free pattern on Ravelry. It actually has quite a few projects. Um, I have just started the mesh section, but um, I have to tell you that I am not following the, it's kind of hard to show because it's right on top of the needle there. Um, it's really hard to, if you can tell, you can tell a little bit there. <laughs> um, I'm not following the pattern exactly because this was made for fingering weight yarn and this is 
like I said, light lace weight. This feels like air. It's so lightweight. It's so different than this. It's a completely different yarn. Um, you know, it's a single, it's, I think I have more air get into this yarn. Um, so lots of ways. It's just very, it's just interesting, you, you know. I think it is, it is so important to knit with your hand spun and to see, you know, how it knits up. Um, plus it's fun, right? So yes, this has been um, growing really fast. And like I said, I did change the pattern a little bit. Um, this is super similar to my Holy Chevron shawl um, in the way that it, in the, you know, in the fact that it's a, a crescent, crest, crescent shawl and it has these um, uh, you know I want to say holes um, the these these yarn overs sort of, sort of like a little lace eyelet effect um, and it's gonna have sort of a um, similar lacy edging but they're but they're different so this is stockinette in the main body, whereas this is garter. And um, so I've started the, there's a mesh section, and I started that, um, uh, you know, I've only, I'm only um, like starting on the second repeat of the pattern or something like that. Um, it's really super easy. And um, what's really nice is that the pattern tells you how many stitches you need for the pattern. So, like I said, I went off pattern because it's knitting up so differently than um, a fingering weight would. So I've had to adjust it to what makes more sense um, for the way this is knitting. And so it tells you, uh, it's a free pattern, so I just tell you. It needs to be a multiple of three. So however many stitches you have, you need to be able to divide it by three evenly. So uh, all I did was just make sure that I knit to a point when I was ready that the number of stitches I had on the needle was a multiple of three. So then I could start the um, mesh pattern. And uh, that worked beautifully. And um, so I think I'm going to probably do um, I think you're supposed to do four repeats and I think I might do eight or more because look how much yarn I have left. Like I have so much yarn left. I'm a little bit worried about it. <laughs> so I think I might need to double or triple this mesh pattern and um, I'm going to go grab. Okay. So this is the kindness shawl pattern, um, the printout. And like I said, it is a free pattern on Ravelry and you can see the um, the lighting's not the best. Like it's good lighting, but um, the way it's hitting this is not not the best. But there is it's a horseshoe lace, I think it's called um, horseshoe lace. So and there's um, a photo of that. So yes, I'm on this mesh section right now, and you can see just how different this looks to what I have. So um, yes, so I'm in this mesh, mesh section, but I'm probably going to do a couple more repeats than the pattern calls for, and then I'm probably going to knit a lot more repeats of this horseshoe lace. You know, probably double or triple that as well to use up. Um, all of this, this 600, I think it was, came out like almost perfectly 600 yards. I think it's like 601 or two yards in this. Um, so yes. So, um, I'm kind of just seeing, you know, seeing what makes sense as I go. And I think this is a perfect pattern to play with. So if you wanted to change um, the weight of the yarn or or something like that or maybe you just would rather have more um, lace sections or more mesh sections or whatever um, this is really nice because it tells you what you need to know for 
the number of stitches. So for example, the horseshoe lace tells you multiple of 10 plus one. Um, and then how many rows? Eight rows. So if you wanted to double that or triple that, or you know, you wanted to, um, maybe you want to knit it later further on instead of when the pattern tells you to, this is a great pattern to do that because it gives you the tools that you need to, um, to adjust it. So yeah, so that is it. I, oh, I am knitting this on, uh, I'm using Chalgu needles, the same uh, lace mini set. <laughs> I need to like remember what the name is. Um, and this is 2.25 millimeter, uh, so it's a US one. But yeah, so that's it. Okay, so that is my Created by LCB um, yarn and shawl August colorway. Oh, um, so these are really muted tones, and I don't want to keep talking about it, but um, these are really muted. Um, they're not, uh, you know, they're not the bright, vibrant colors that I'm really attracted to. I just noticed that I match my wedding. <laughs> I, ma I made this. This is a double wedding. Oops, my point. This is a double wedding ring quilt. Am I saying that right? I should know I made it. I made that for my husband and I um, our, uh, for our wedding and it hung up behind us. I don't know if you can tell there is a embroidered uh, maple leaf right there. Right, right there. <laughs> and and um, I made that for our wedding and it hung we had a sweetheart table instead of the long table. We did the, you know, just the two of us. And it hung behind us um, at, at our wedding. So, yeah. Um, it's beautiful. And uh, I thought I would film in a new location today. Oh, so, okay. Let's just get completely off topic. Um, so, anyways, I, I'm probably going to be ordering some dye to play with, which is really exciting. And so, I was toying with the idea of over dyeing this just because although the colors are pretty they're not exactly my colors I mean maybe and they that looks that looks darker than it does in real life I would like that if it looked that dark in real life um, but maybe over dyeing it with a blue and seeing you know what how it changes um, so I think what I'll do is if I have leftovers, and I probably will, um, dye the leftovers and then knit a sample and see how it looks. And if I like it and like how the over dye changes all the other colors, um, I'm thinking like a warm tone blue or a cool tone blue and then comparing them, seeing which one I like, and then maybe I would over dye my whole shawl. So, um, I don't know. Good idea? Bad idea? We'll see. So yeah, that is that. And that is it for my works in progress, um, at least that I have made progress on. So, um, so yeah, so I think I'm going to move on to spinning now. So like I said before, I got the Into the World uh, Fiber Club for August and so I'm going to go ahead and show that right now so if you don't want to see that then um, feel free to come back and check it out later because I have other things to show or or not <laughs> but I'm going to show that now so this is the um, into the world August colorway and I will take it out of the bag it is called Iocane powder and I was like what is that that seems so specific too that it had to be it had to be you know what what are, what was it what did it mean was Iocane powder so of course I searched you know and found that it is a princess bride um, it's in the movie princess bride so there's the whole scene where he catches up to I don't know their names I'm sorry um, and I've watched the video enough times too. <laughs> Oops. Um, so there's the scene where he tries to outwit. Oh God, what's that actor's name? I don't know. He's the funny voice. 
anyways, so he they he puts poison in the two drinks, and then um, he tries to you know they do this battle of wits, but the trick is that there's really poison in both glasses, and um, and our our hero just has an immunity to this <laughs> this poison. So, <laughs> anyways, Princess Bride uh, themed fiber. It is Romney, and it is. A little, you know, it's definitely scratchy. Um, I have spun Romney one other time from my first sort of spinning experience. I bought a spinning box. So um, if, you, if you're if you into spinning, you've probably heard of them. You purchase a spinning box and you get just tons and tons of different fibers from different um, dyers and farms and things. Um, you get some natural wools. You get dyed wools, you get, you know, synthetic stuff, a whole variety, and I think um, you should do it at least once. If you're a spinner, you should at least, um, you should try it once because that you get such a variety of things, especially if you're still learning and, um, you know, you're still experiencing new things and learning how to spin different kinds of fibers, and so yes, I, I recommend it. Um, I got it around my birthday, so it's, you know, like a birthday <laughs> thing, because they're not cheap. Um, anyways, so moving on, this is Romney, it's very, very pretty, and um, I would like your help. So if you're a spinner and you have experience um, spinning for socks, I would like your recommendation for spinning this. because. It's Romney, and I don't know. That's the one thing that I I looked at uh, my I have a I have a couple of fiber books. I have let me grab it. Okay, I'm back. So I have uh, recently bought this um, the Spinner's Book of Fleece, and I will show you. I'll um, show you the page. I might actually even remember what page it's on. I did. Okay, so here's the Romney page. Isn't he cute? It's all snowy. Almost makes me want sheep, even though I have no experience with <laughs> non-pet animals. <laughs> but when I was looking, um, looking through this, the socks right here made me think, oh, I should spin for socks. So, um, Yeah, so it's a it's a scratchier wool, and it's a long wool, so it should be yes, it should be better for socks. And I would like to, um, yeah, spin spin for socks. So um, should I do a chain ply. I don't know that I want to go through the uh, the amount of work that it takes to do a traditional three ply because this was it's a lot of work to spin that thin, spin three bobbins, ply them together and then they don't match up perfectly so you feel like you're wasting your wool. It's a whole ordeal. <laughs> so, but like a three ply, like a chain ply, Navajo ply, or um, or can I get away with a high twist um, two ply? So, what do you think? What is your experience? Uh, what do you recommend? If you are an experienced spinner and you spin and knit socks, I would love to hear your opinion. Or maybe you can point me in the direction of um, some, you know, someone who has already, you know, talked about spinning for socks. And um, I've seen some some websites, some blog posts and things like that, but um, I, you know, I certainly don't feel like I know, I've read everything there is to know. Um, more, I think the more I know the better, the more opinions I have the better. My only thought right now is just to spin it with a high twist and apply it with a high twist. Um, so, yeah, that's my only thought right now, and um, yeah, I've been holding off on spinning this because I was tempted to spin it immediately 
because I get that way sometimes like this. I spun on autopilot. I just broke it into sections in a way that I thought looked nice and then spun it completely on autopilot. I didn't pay too much attention to it. Um, I just did what felt natural, what felt right, and uh, it came out really nicely. So um, anyways, yes, I want to I wanna have a, a plan for this. So yeah, okay, so that's it. This uh, for my um, acquisitions, spinning acquisitions. <laughs> um, yes, but I do have one other spinning thing and I talked about it last time. I guess you could call it um, a spinning work in progress. <laughs> um, yeah, I think this is the last thing I have to talk about for today. Um, so, and I, I think I'll take this off, sorry. So, um, I have been spinning with my new Turkish spindle. Uh, I think it was the last video that I uh, had just barely gotten my Turkish spindle in and in the mail. Um, and I was talking about wanting to use it to spin this Shetland alpaca um, fiber that I got. I got this fiber from Yarn and Yoga during the Great Northern Yarn Haul, um, and it comes from a Vermont farm. So I'm spinning this so that it goes, uh, actually I actually have a note right here, blue, yellow, blue, green. and <laughs> I just know that it's dark blue, yellow, the lighter blue, the green, but it's black in between each row. So it's black, darker blue, black, yellow, and so on and so forth. So you can see where I transitioned. There's the darker blue, there's the black, and now I'm on yellow. And yeah, like I said, this is Shetland wool with, um, one of them has llama in it, and then one of them has alpaca. And, um, Yes, so I have been working on this. So sorry about that. Yeah, I really don't have um, any room in this space to <laughs> to, uh, to to show you um, me spinning on this. If that's anything you're interested in, um, if anyone wants to see that, you could let me know, and maybe I would record myself um, spinning at some point. But yeah, I just don't have the room to do it. Um, and there's the bottom. You can see. So I think um, I will either chain ply this or if I two ply it, the colors will barber pull, which I might be okay with that. Um, but uh, it's not exactly a desirable look. That's not what I was intending for it. So I probably will, I don't know. I haven't made up my mind. Um, I might, I might two-ply it. Um, we'll see. So this is just for fun, and, um, it should be, I, I will be making mittens with this. Um, that's my, my plan is to spin this and then make, make them, make the yarn into mittens. Knit it. Can I speak? <laughs> Okay, so that's, that's it. <laughs> um, and I'm doing really good on time. Um, so that is it for knitting, spinning, crafting, and other crafty things. I don't, oh, sewing, that thing. <laughs> um, yes, that's, that is it for, for the crafting section. But I thought, for fun, I would talk about some non- so in other news, some, some non-crafty things. So um, yeah, what I have been up to lately. And um, yeah, so I started watching The Defenders and I'm not gonna talk about it too much because um, I've only watched, I think we watched one or two, no, two or three of the episodes. Um, and my husband and I are watching them together so I'm not allowed to watch it without him. I get in trouble. <laughs> um, 
yeah, so we have been watching that. It's starting to build up. Like, it's, you know, it started out kind of slow, but it's starting to build up. Um, and I, <laughs> you know, I follow Transitory on Instagram, and she keeps putting little um, poop emojis over uh, the Iron Fist's face. Why? Why? Is she, like, what does she have against him? Why doesn't she like him? Is there, is there something I don't know? Is there, like, is there something, like, he's done? Like, the actor himself is done? I don't know. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing, and I'm kind of embarrassed to admit that I have been, um, watching and, uh, and kind of loving, and I hate to admit it, is, um, because it, it, I don't know, it just, it, it seems kind of, well, it's soap opera-y and sort of, I don't know, childish, but, I've been watching Vampire Diaries <laughs> and um, and really liking it, <laughs> even though it is kind of soup op soap opera -y, soap opera y. But um, yeah, I never watched it before, and there's like eight seasons or something. I could be wrong about that. There's a lot of seasons, and I've been watching them on Netflix, and that's what I have been um, uh, Netflixing. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyways, that's all I have to say about that. Um, but uh, there have been, I have been reading, uh, rereading a book, and I want to show you that, so I'll grab that. Okay, so I'm back. Um, so I am nearly finished reading, it's upside down. Um, <laughs> no, it wasn't, it wasn't, oh my god. I am nearly finished reading um, the last book in a the series, The Discovery of Witches, and I have already read the series, but it had been so long that I decided to reread it because I love this book, and if I'm willing to reread a book, you know it's good because I don't, I'm not one of those people who rereads books a lot, you know, unless it's Harry Potter or it's a series that I love and the books don't come out, you know, for a year or two, like... Uh, the Throne of Glass, or the, her other series, what's it called? Okay. Anyways, so, yeah, I love this book, and if, um, if you are into uh, fantasy, obviously fiction, um, witches and vampires and, uh, demons, the, it says demons, but they're not any sort of demon you've ever thought or read about, they're just sort of like, in what would we would think of in the real world as savants. So normal people who have unusual un abilities, you know, like mental abilities or um, things like that. Or highly, highly creative people like um, like those people who are sort of, uh, you know, you kind of think of like the manic depressive people who are super highly creative. Um, she, they call the those kind of people demons in this book. Anyways, it's a great series and I love it and I'm nearly finished um, rereading the series so. And then I have one other book that I want to talk about because I really loved it and um, I hesitate to talk about it because it is a highly controversial book. This is The Black Witch and it is by Laurie Forrest and I loved this book and I'm going to be honest when I first saw this book and um, I went to a local bookstore and I just really like the cover, I'm going to be honest. And then I do use the barcode scanner on the Goodreads app to quickly look up books. And I kind of, um, you know, get a, you know, I look to see if it has three or four or five stars or something. Normally, if it has less than four stars, I won't buy it. Even if I've looked at it, read the, you know, jacket, and it seems like something that would be interesting if it doesn't have at least four stars, I hesitate to buy it because, um, you know, I don't want to waste my money on a book that I'm not going to like or that's not going to be good. So I was surprised. This one has had a poor, poor rating. 
than I feel that it deserves. I give this book five stars. I'm an easy five star giver. <laughs> like if I really enjoyed the book, it, I'll just give five stars. Um, it doesn't have to be the most amazing book ever to get five stars from me. Um, but <laughs> but I really enjoyed it. And the reason why it had bad bad reviews is because um, this what's happening in the book. So there is sort of it's not racism. Um, like we have, it's not black and white and, uh, it's not, it's not like our racism. Um, it's, uh, it's racism from witches and fairies and, um, but it's not, it's not glorified in any way. Um, it's not in the book when, if you can read behind the, behind the, you know, between the lines sort of, it's not saying that this is okay or this is good. In fact, it's, it's pushing the main character in the other direction. She's learning and growing up and realizing that the world that she grew up in, she grew up in this world with this narrow minded view. Um, that everything she thought was bad or evil, people that she thought were wrong or bad or evil really aren't. And, um, she's, she's sort of growing up and learning about the real world. And, um, I think it just sort of reflects true society, like a real society. Um, she even discovers, um, this is a spoiler. So, so far I haven't said anything too spoilery, but, um, she discovers that. So I'm going to say something really spoilery. She discovers that one of her brothers is gay. Um, and in their world that is wrong. Um, it's illegal, or I don't know, you could, you could be, I forget, you could be stripped of your magic or imprisoned or, or something like that. Um, you're not allowed to be gay. And I think he's even in the military or something like that. So, um, and it's not, so, so she isn't immediately accepting. She's kind of like, what are you going to do? You can't, you can't be that way. Um, so she's not immediately like, oh, I accept you. She's scared for him. She's worried about him because of the society that she lives in. Um, so yes, all of these things are the reason why people have um, given this book a bad review. And they are entitled to that. Um, the ones who have read it are entitled to that. Um, but... Um, if that is something that you don't want to read about, or that would be too hard for you to read about, um, then, you know, it's not for you. But, but I think that it reflects real society, um, real life. And I think what it is, is sort of a growing up story about a girl who, um, learns that, you know, things aren't, uh, as they seem that other people, though they seem different from us and that we, we you know, you grow up and you, maybe you were taught to believe that this person is different than you. Um, really they're not really, they're just like us. They're the same. We have the same desires and fears. We all love and, um, we all hurt. And, you know, it's just, it's, it's very reflective of the real world. So, yeah, I think it is a sort of growing, uh, growing, growing up and learning about the real world. Sort of, oh, she goes to college. So yeah, it's sort of like, you know, what happens, you know, you learn about, about the real world. I, maybe not. I don't know. That's, that's probably a lie. <laughs> but anyways, I liked it. Um, I'm excited to, to read the next book. Hopefully she does come out with another book. Anyways, I'm excited to see what happens, excited to see how she continues to grow and, um, and to confront these prejudices and, uh, these ideas about different races and, and, um, sexual orientations and things like that. Um, so, <laughs> so yeah. Um, and, uh, I don't know if <laughs> it's kind of, uh, relates to what's been happening in the real world in the United States. I don't want to get into it too much, but, um, that we had some really heartbreaking,
racism, bigotry, ugliness uh, happen. And um, I just want to say that I don't know. It's cheesy, but all you need is love, right? I don't want to end on this sad note. <laughs> oh, anyways. Well, so that's it for today. And um, if you are still with me and hanging around, um, then look. Then I'll tell you, you can look forward to a fabric haul video that should be coming soon and with some sewing plans with that. So um, I'm excited to, um, to start a sort of big sewing project um, for the fall. And uh, yeah, so I will, when that comes in, I will get that up and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.